Hey everyone, welcome back. So as the son of photographers and also a very big fan of data science, something that's been a long, long time fascination of mine has been the field of digital images. Since I learned that images are just giant matrices full of pixel values between zero and one, and learning that we could do very intuitive operations on these matrices to do real world things, the floodgates just opened for me. It was super cool to learn that we could do these intuitive operations called convolutions on these giant image matrices in order to do real world things like blur images or detect the edges in an image. But there was always this one operation that eluded me. When I learned about it, it didn't make sense why the convolution kernel looked the way it did. And that was sharpening an image. We've all heard of sharpening an image. Heck, your smartphone probably has a feature to help you sharpen the lines in an image. But how does this actually work? And how does this little matrix convolved with your giant image actually end up doing the job of sharpening your image? The main revelation I had that helped me understand how all this works may seem painfully obvious to some of you, but I think it's worth stating anyway, and that's the fact that sharpening an image is the opposite of blurring an image. Now, whether that sounds obvious to you or if that's completely new news to you, I think it's worth stating because it gives us a place to start in order to re-engineer this sharpening kernel and understand why it works. Starting our story then with blurring an image, what are you doing when you blur an image? Well, in layman's terms, you're letting each pixel's value bleed or blend into the pixels next to it. That's what it means to blur on a pixel by pixel level. And then when you zoom out and look at the entire image, it looks like there's this fuzziness or haziness that wasn't there before. Now getting a little bit more technical, when you blur an image, you're setting a pixel's value to no longer be independent, but be the average of the pixel's values who are around it, in a local neighborhood around it. And therefore, a kernel that looks like this, convolved with your entire image, is going to do exactly that. Because this kernel is going to set the pixel's value in the blurred image to the average value of itself in the original image, but also the pixel to its top, bottom, left, and right. And that's exactly achieving this goal of making each pixel's value blend or bleed into the pixels that are around it. Now, what if we wanted to do the opposite? What if we had an already blurred image and we want to somehow go back? We want to sharpen these blurry lines, get back to our original image. As we think about this a little bit, a little mini paradox arises. If you take an image and you blur it, can you ever get exactly back to where you started? Well, in general, we think about this and the answer seems to be no, because when we blurred an image, we set a pixel's value to the average of the pixels around it. And so now it's hard to know looking at the pixel's value in the blurry image, what was its original value? We essentially collapsed five numbers into one. And so taking that one number and re-expanding it into five, AKA just creating information, isn't something that we're able to perfectly do. And so we resolve the paradox, which is great. But it also means that when we sharpen a blurry image, we should never expect to get back to exactly the original image because that would mean doing this magic CSI show thing of clicking a button and just creating new information that doesn't exist. What it also means is that there seems to be some kind of drawback or trade-off to what we call over sharpening an image. So keep that in your mind for the end of the video. But getting back to the goal of sharpening an image, because we now see it as the opposite of blurring, we can actually start the process of constructing the sharpening kernel by starting with the blurring kernel and trying to, in some sense, do the opposite of that. So starting our story with the blurring kernel or blurring matrix, we know that the job of this matrix is to give us the average of the pixel values to its top, left, right, bottom, and also itself. Now, in sharpening, we want to take a pixel's value and move it away from this average. And so we'll achieve that by taking what we call the identity kernel, which all it does is just taking a pixel's value and mapping it to itself. And from the identity kernel, we're going to subtract the blurring kernel. Now this is the key insight here, so let's dwell on this just a little bit. What we're doing here is saying, take a pixel's value in this blurry image and take away the average of the pixel's values in its neighborhood so that we move a pixel's value away from that average neighborhood value. So this difference so far is intuitively measuring the distance between a pixel's value and the pixel's values around it. Let's say that distance is positive. Well, that means that a pixel's value is higher than the average value of the pixels around it. And therefore we want to move it even further in the positive direction. 
And so what we'll do is take the original pixel's value and add it to this difference. Because again, in the case that that difference is positive, we're moving that pixel's value even more in the positive direction, which is going to be even further away from the average values of the pixels around it. Now the story also works in the other direction. What if that distance is negative? That means a pixel's value is lower than the average value of the pixels around it. And therefore we wanna move its value even further in the negative direction. And so doing the same adding operation is going to work in that case as well. And so now that we understand the intuition behind this operation, we can also assign a sharpening factor K to that distance. The smaller the sharpening factor, the less intensely we're trying to move a pixel's value away from the average value of the pixels around it. The larger the sharpening factor, the more intensely we're trying to move a pixel's value away from the average value of the pixels around it. So it's exactly the sharpening factor that's gonna control the amount or level of sharpening that we apply to our image. Now the big question is, does this actually work? Well, let's set the sharpening factor to five. And if we do that and work out the matrix math, we get that this is our sharpening kernel. And that is the exact matrix you saw in the thumbnail of this video and also at the beginning of this video. So this is very, very often used as what's called the unsharp mask, which is what's doing the sharpening. But we can set that sharpening factor to whatever we want. It's not the only sharpening kernel. So if we convolve our picture here with this sharpening kernel and then take a zoomed in look, you see that the lines have definitely gotten sharper. Let's set the sharpening factor equal to 10. And now you see that it's even gotten more sharper, but something else has started happening. If you take a close look at the sharpened image, you notice that there's some weird texturing or pebbling going on. Not really too nice to look at, even if we did achieve the primary goal of getting the lines to be sharper. And now we can see that pebbling or texturing just kind of be taken to its extreme if we set the sharpening factor equals to 100. Now you see that the lines are even sharper than they were before, but it's not the first thing our eyes go to. The first thing our eyes go to is why the heck are there weird colors and textures and patterns in this image that shouldn't be there? Well, where does this trade-off come from? Where as we increase the sharpening factor, we get sharper lines as we would expect, but we also get this weird noise that seemingly appears in our image. Going back to our story of constructing the sharpening kernel, we see that if we set the sharpening factor very, very large, then we're moving a pixel's value, yes, away from the average value of the pixels around it, but we're also moving it way away from where that pixel's value was in the original blurry image. And by doing so, by moving a pixel's value very far away from where it was in the original blurry image, you end up getting a picture that pretty much looks nothing like it did before. And so while the lines might be sharper, it also becomes a lot less identifiable what objects are in this image which is how we get that weird texturing or pebbling or noise. So hopefully you thought this journey walking through constructing the sharpening kernel was as interesting as I did. If you like this video, please like and subscribe for more videos just like this, and I will see you all next time.